Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. I'm going to get flamed for this video big time. The comments section should be very colorful. Why? Because today I'm going to talk about Unity, which is a desktop environment that we all thought was dead, but I don't think it's quite gone yet, ladies and gentlemen. And it is very interesting to watch what is going on in the Linux community um, surrounding Unity right now. Uh, yesterday I had the craziest experience. I was sitting here and I was actually fixing to install Ubuntu 1604 with Unity on my hardware. And I was listening to the Linux Unplugged podcast. And Chris Fisher, who is the host there, he was talking about the fact that he had installed Ubuntu 1604 with Unity on a lot of his machines. And I was like, this is weird, man. And I ordinarily don't mention other people's stuff in my videos, but that was one of those situations where it was like, okay, if I don't say something about that, people are going to go, you just did the video because you heard Chris say it on Unplugged. And yeah, I did, actually. Uh, but I was in the process, of, when I started the show, I was actually downloading 1604 and getting ready to put it on a USB stick because I was thinking about installing it. So I actually went ahead and did it. And I want to talk about why, and I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with Unity because I find it interesting. So what you're looking at here is my computer running Ubuntu 17.10 in a virtual machine. So we have 17.10 running inside Ubuntu 16.04 with the Unity desktop. And you will notice that they kind of, sort of, look a little bit the same. The Ubuntu folks... Have, since they have switched to the GNOME desktop, they, they wanted to make it kind of look and act a bit like Unity. So they came up with their own little dash to dock variation, and this is what it looks like. And it sort of kind of acts like the launcher in Unity, although the big difference is, is that in Unity, this button right here gives you the dash. And the thing about that is, is that here, uh, if whatever button you have sitting there, if you're kind of used to clicking up here to get a dash, you'll open your browser <laughs> or whatever it is that you have there. And so there's a, there's a few little things that are different as far as the workflow is concerned. And of course, with the GNOME desktop, you click on activities and then you get this lovely blank page. And if you want to see your applications, you can come down here and click on applications. And so, yes, there are some differences, and it's it's a bit more simplified than the Unity Dash ever was. And that is what the Dash looks like. So I can look at the applications installed on this machine, and that's what that looks like, and all that sort of thing. So when Unity was originally released in late 2010, or at 12.04, well, no, what was the first one? 11.04 was the first Ubuntu to ship with it by default. The, it was universally hated. I mean, nobody liked it. Uh, the GNOME developers had gone to GNOME 3, which was another desktop that caused a lot of controversy, and people didn't like that as well. And Ubuntu took it as a sign that it was time for them to go their own way. So they launched the Unity desktop. They did a great deal of research into what they wanted to put into it. They wanted to come up with something that would be very easy to use, familiar, keyboard oriented, simple. They wanted something that was going to be the kind of thing that you'd want in an enterprise situation. And they started pumping out Unity and uh, they didn't change it much over the entire run of the desktop. Unity has not changed. It has gotten better. When it first came along, there were bugs and there were problems with it, but now it's probably one of the more stable desktops in the Linux world. And none of that really matters to the community. There are people out there that absolutely hated Unity, hated that Ubuntu was putting it out there, took every opportunity when it was mentioned to talk about how awful it was. And then when Canonical decided that they were going to get rid of Unity. They were going to stop developing Unity uh, in April. 
they dropped a bunch of their projects because uh, for those of you who are not hip to this, let me just tell you that they also had this idea of convergence that went along with the whole Unity desktop project. And that was that you would have Ubuntu running on your desktop, your laptop, you would have it running on your phone, you'd have it running on your tablet, and all this stuff could talk to each other and it would all look and act the same. That was the whole convergence idea. And it turned out to be a, a big, huge albatross around Canonical's neck because it wasn't making any money. The Linux community wasn't responding to it. They weren't contributing to it. They, it just didn't work. And so they said, okay, we're going to quit developing Unity. But they said that they would continue to support the Unity desktop because in 1604, which is supported until 2021, that's what you get when you download vanilla Ubuntu. So let's fast forward a little bit. All these people are saying Unity's dead and all the people that hated Unity were going, oh, it's great, I hated that thing, it was a dumb idea, they shouldn't have done that anyway. 1710 comes along. So I start testing 1710. One of the first videos I posted about it when it was in the alpha stage, I said, Unity is dead. Well, guess what? I got a correction from Alan Pope. I didn't say it in the video, I said it in a comment because somebody said, will Unity be available? I said, no, it won't. Alan Pope came along, jumped in and said, Unity is available in 1710. You just have to download it and install it. Okay, all right. So I said, well, I guess I was wrong. So if you want Unity, you can have it. Now they're talking about Unity being available in Ubuntu 1804. So all this talk about Unity and all of this testing of Ubuntu with the you know new GNOME desktop that is kind of sort of looking and acting a little bit like Unity. And then if you look at Ubuntu Mate, for instance, they have the layout called Mutiny, which is supposed to be a lot like Unity, but it's not Unity. It doesn't work and act exactly the same way. So I actually found myself starting to miss Unity and Unity for me has always been just super rock solid. It just works and I don't hate it. Uh, there's some things about Unity that are actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and shut down 1710 because I just wanted to have it sitting here so you guys could see it. But I'm going to go ahead and power this off. We're going to take a look at the desktop. It's, it's just super simple. You have the launcher over here and you can, you know, stick your programs on here. And then we have uh, the dash, which is a big search tool basically it shows you all kinds of stuff on the computer it's not perfect um, I don't have Shotwell installed on here so if I click on photos it's telling me I don't have any photos because it doesn't actually look in the folder it goes by what is in Shotwell or whatever so I don't care but I don't really need to find photos that way it did find the videos so it shows that I have some videos on the computer you know that sort of thing and then it will look at what is loaded into rhythm box for music but it doesn't see everything in my my library it's not all there so the the whole point of it is is that yes it works but sometimes it doesn't work but if you don't really worry about the fact that that it's not doing exactly what you think it ought to do it works pretty well because with the Unity desktop, if I want to open a program, I just click the super key and start typing disks. Let's say I wanted to open disks. Well, there it is. It pops right up. And if it's the first thing that shows up, which it would if I had typed that correctly, you know, then all you got, well, it still is not the first thing that shows up. So, but anyway, you get the point. If I hit, if I click this, then I'm going to get the uh, disk usage analyzer here right there so usually you can just start typing let's see what let's get that behavior to work so if I do that look there's the disk usage analyzer pops itself right open and if that's what I was going for in that case I was going for disks but that's okay bad example anyhow it, it's a really super easy desktop to learn how to use with keyboard shortcuts you want to know what the keyboard shortcuts are? Just hold down the super key and don't let go. There are all the keyboard shortcuts that you can take advantage of. Um, we got system settings over here. We've got your login, your logout, all of this other stuff. Uh, Unity still supports uh, the little uh, notifiers and applets up here. You want to put you know, programs with that. You're using Dropbox, Telegram, any of those sorts of things that are going to have some sort of applet. It will appear up here. That's a good thing to have because that's one of the things that GNOME is getting rid of and a lot of people are unhappy about that as well. They've decided they don't want to support that little feature anymore. 
So there's a lot of question marks with GNOME, and I don't want to make it sound like that the Ubuntu folks have done a poor job with Ubuntu 17.10, because they absolutely have not. It works really, really well. There are some nagging issues in there, depending on your hardware. People are experiencing all kinds of little bugs. But then again, they were very straight up about the fact that Ubuntu 17.10 was basically going to be a long-term beta for Ubuntu 18.04, and that they were going to work out those bugs. So by the time 18.04 comes along, it would be as stable as 14.04 is and as stable as 16.04 has become. There were a lot of problems with 16.04 originally, but now it's pretty much very stable. So what I did was when I installed this is I made a lot of changes. I, I first I went and grabbed the Arc Dark theme. Um, I like that theme. I like dark themes these days. They're just really easy on my eyes. So I had to have that. And then I went and grabbed my favorite icon set that's in the 1604 repositories, which is called Gnome Colors Common. And it's just they're gaudy, and I'm used to looking at them. I use them with Linux Mint, and they work nicely so I did that and then I went through the system and I, I I took a lot of stuff out like I don't have the Ubuntu software application in here I don't use that I use GDB to install deb files and then I use the uh, synaptic package manager to get packages and if I want to install a snap I do it from the command line speaking of the command line uh, I also turned off the updater uh, so it doesn't go out and nag me about updates. I will do that with my own script that I wrote called up. And I don't need backups running either because I do that myself. And I, so I just took a lot of stuff out of the system. And I really wanted to make it lean and mean. So like for video, it's MPV. I just click on a video. It starts to play in the... It, there's no library or any of that garbage. I don't like that stuff. I'm using Rhythmbox for my music collection because I have a bunch of playlists and internet radio stations there. This is the icon for Rhythmbox. I know it doesn't look anything like an icon for Rhythmbox should, but I'm used to it, and I actually know which one that is. So Rhythmbox is set up, and that works nicely, and uh, that's it. it. It's just real basic lean and mean setup. And so far, it has been completely, totally, absolutely rock solid. <laughs> so Unity doesn't appear to want to die, which I find really interesting because so many people hated Unity and they were like, oh, it's the best thing that Ubuntu ever did was drunk dumping the Unity project and they never did get Unity 8 off the ground. Boy, that sucked. And then we, we just all of this has gone around in the tech press, people talking about how horrible Unity is and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, and here it is where you you know I'm using it uh, even Chris Fisher is using it and uh, I just find it interesting so I had to jump in on this um, there's nothing wrong with Linux Mint gang not a thing I don't have any issue at all with Linux Mint it was working fine and Linux Mint 1802 is so solid and it is or 18.2 not 18.02 uh, it's working great and 18.3 uh, is going to be a really cool distribution as well. They're going to add some features in there that are going to be nice. And my all of my other machines are running it. Just this one. Just the one that I ordinarily do the videos on. This is the one where I play and I try different stuff out. But, dang it. I wanted to give Unity another shot. And it looks like it might actually hang around. Um, there are several forks out there. People have forked the project and they want to continue with the development of unity 8 for instance and uh, that's fine I mean people want to do that that's perfectly all right um, but what I find interesting is the fact that canonical themselves they are going to be supporting unity 7 good old unity 7 the one that everybody hates the one that runs on compiz and it's a big compiz plug-in and all this other stuff uh, you know with the lovely HUD here where you can start typing things in to get things to open up and all these little features that everybody was going on about it's not going away it's going to be in the it's going to be in the repositories for 1710 it's already there you can install it now probably going to be in 1804 it makes you wonder did they throw the baby out with the bathwater over there at ubuntu maybe they should have 
kept maintaining seven and dumped Unity eight, which it looks like what they're going to be doing anyway. Hmm, very interesting indeed. Thank you for watching the video. Have fun in the comments section. This is going to be interesting to hear what you got to say. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And also, check out freedompenguin.com for lots of cool stories about Linux. And I will check you out again soon.